Hey everyone, welcome to this video about the top three things that shocked me transitioning from uh, chess to poker. Uh, so first of all, for the ones of you who don't know me, so I was a chess coach for 10 years. I wrote about 80 articles in that time frame. I wrote a book and uh, basically my, my life was following the, the, the best players games and trying to triturating them into themes and, and examples to show them to my students. I also worked with a lot of uh, the best trainers in the world. So basically, I was at the top of the, the chess epistemology, if you'd like. And the, the first one huge thing, overarching theme that shocked me in poker, it is the prevalence of money. Why should it be the only measurement tool? That is something that right from the beginning, I didn't understand. Why should recreationals be happy to lose, let's say, $200 on, on a Friday night? And why should they think that it is better than to go, I don't know, 10 times to the cinemas or, or, or something? Because it is a beautiful game, because it is fantastic, they will be cognitively challenged, there will be uh, psychology, they will have a lot of, of feelings, of the, the, their heart will pump, their blood will flow. And why should this aspect of poker, it is such a beautiful, such an exciting game, why shouldn't it be present in the poker content, but most importantly in, in the poker coaching world? And why should uh, money be the only measurement uh, tool? So now if we go more concretely, the first big shock was a cultural one. If you like, it is the difference between chess and poker. It is a little bit the difference between uh, the United States and Europe. Why? Chess has been heavily uh, developed under the Soviet chess school and the, the, the biggest influence in history has been the Soviet chess school and generally speaking, the, the European culture. Whereas uh, poker is really a US uh, kind of, of thing, of, of hunting field, if you'd like. That means that people who think about poker, they think about it in a mathematical way. There is a lack of, of social sciences, if you like, in, in, into poker that we have in, in chess. Because when one thinks about poker, one thinks about winning money, that's the problem. And then it is correlated to math, it is correlated to, the, to economics or uh, to uh, finance or maybe to Bitcoin or whatever. And all of the technical words uh, that are used, sometimes as a European, we don't even know what that means uh, because the economic culture in, in Europe, it is bad. And that is bad and that is better in, in the United States. But at the other side of the spectrum, there is a lack of, of quest of beauty, of art, into poker that exists in um, in chess. And soon there will be a, a new poker course released in, in Upswing about poker methodology. And we will really talk a lot about that. Try to switch the, the, the paradigm, to shift the paradigm if you'd like, uh, to go from really hard sciences, from math to words, to social uh, sciences. The second uh, biggest difference that, that I find it is there is a lack of individuality. And what does that mean? There is probably a lack of ambition, meaning people are just copying what some top pro uh, said in a video. And that is the biggest nefarious effect of money. It is that if they are copying that, they will short term win money. But it is exactly the same as, you know, uh, what, what they say in the stock markets. Uh, by the time your taxi driver tells you to buy uh, Tesla stocks or whatever, maybe you will win some money and it is great. But the bulk of the benefits was obviously to be reaped already uh, before. And the problem is that people aren't ambitious enough to try to, to do something new. But also very often they aren't curious enough. Poker isn't seen as an art or as more of a, of a science, if you'd like. And the difference with chess it is that in chess, every player on earth wants to create a novelty. You know, uh, in every single game, there is a novelty because at some point it will be, it will be new, except the, the, the short draws that are all, all the same. But generally speaking, every time you, you will have your chance at, maybe sometimes there will be a novelty that is very important, uh, theoretically speaking. And then you have a DVD of, uh, of Anish Giri, I don't know, but the French, and he says, oh, and uh, Fernandez, he played that in an open in uh, Leon in 2022, whatever, and you will have your, your moment of, of glory. And so that means that every single player, every single chess player on earth is trying with the computer to find something new. And there is this quest of, of excitement and of curiosity and of terra incognita. Whereas in poker, there is a lot of copying. And that is why did, for instance, Isildur's overbet stay in history? Or if we think about Linus, he introduced the 10% the, the bet. Uh, the, the, they invented something and they stayed. And that is a way to be happy, uh, I, I would say, that doesn't exist enough into poker, making the poker theory advance. And then the, the, the last thing, the third thing, it is, I would say, there is a lack of happiness. 
in the poker world and understand me correctly in chess there is less money to be to be won and it is way more difficult to become strong and that means that oftentimes as a teenager you are already one of the best in the world and you are already playing for tens of thousands of dollars and you have a huge stress you're maybe 15 16 years old and you will win maybe more than your parents won in a lifetime if you come from maybe from india or, or whatever and that means that it is so stressful it is so difficult and in the end over a long career you will win less than in poker so that means what do people find that makes them uh, happy? Well, I always want to share this anecdote. It is about Sweat Atalik, the first big Turkish GM. And he, he was playing a tournament, I believe, in ex Yugoslavia. And he, he started bad with like two or three uh, defeats in, in this closed tournament. And that means he was very depressed and he was saying to, to, to his friends, oh, but you know, I'm already, I'm 35, I'm old, I just got divorced, so I'm lonely and I suck at chess. So life is, is really miserable and it is not worth being lived. And then for some reason that the next day he won a brilliant game and he came back to the same friend and he said, but you know, I'm 35, but I'm still young. I'm single, but there are so many opportunities in life and look how brilliant I am in chess. And that means that, okay, obviously it was a little bit hyperbolic, but the, the, the thing is that in this particular tournament, it was already done for him. He wouldn't win money. He wouldn't win elo points. He already lost the rating, you know, uh, he already lost too much. So there wasn't anything tangible that he would win, but the pride of making a nice uh, game made him uh, happy. And that means we, we can have that in, in poker. Uh, you have the pleasure of working home and trying something uh, on the felt. And that means that you are happy of yourself or being able to read your opponent through and you are calling with queen high and it is, it is working. So both these elements will give you a spritz of, of dopamine if you'd like. Uh, we will see that the ultimate goal, how to go in flow, it is to combine both. It is to work on something home and then also to be able to adapt. Maybe uh, if you want an example, I don't know, you, you watch that uh, an ace high mono board is spectacularly bad for the open razor. So you know that you can attack it. But then maybe there is a, a board pairing card on the turn and you didn't uh, watch that because there are so many runouts it is impossible to to remember everything so then uh, suddenly you have to adapt you you are, have more knowledge probably that than your opponent but you have to adapt what, what what is happening and then in the end if you if you win the hand you will have combined both and you will feel like really this this rush of of happiness and of flow and that means that it is a little bit extravagant or uh, am ambitious but this uh, masterclass that that is coming it will be also about happiness about how to be happier uh, through methodology how to be happier concretely in our relationship to poker and how to change a little bit this uh, boring and um, sad uh, state of affairs <laughs>